Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be going over how to add details to your build. So I've just built up a quick simple sort of like starter house here and today we're going to be adding detail to it. So when you build something you need to build your creations with details in mind. So what that means is you don't have to build all the details straight away. I mean you can if you want to. But it's easier just to build a a blank canvas sort of build. So there's enough depth to add things uh, or and there's enough space to add depth. There's enough wall space to add like details, windows, all of that sort of things. You need to build your build so that there is space and the ability to add details. So your base build should be fairly simple. My one here, it's just a massive tall rectangle, like a cuboid sort of shape with a triangle roof and then a little cuboid out the, like cube out the front with a, another triangle roof. And that's not to say that you can't make like wacky and weird builds that aren't simple. It's just, this is a, an ideal build for adding extra details to. You don't need to add huge amounts of detail if your build is weird and wacky and has more smaller shapes because that is detail enough in itself. But if you do want to make your build look a little bit better, especially if they are quite easy to add details to, we're going to do that today. So the first thing you want to do is add in the major things that you want to add, I guess. So add in support structures to your build. So what that this looks like is, is pillars in the corners, sometimes coming out from the build. So in smaller spaces like this, it probably would fit on the same level as the wall. But with something this big, you might want to bring it out a block. That's not going to work for this build, I don't think. But add in s supporting structures so that your build looks like it is supported and connected to the ground. And that doesn't need to be like wood logs either. For example, supporting the structures on this build is the stone sort of like trimming stone, the stone structures up here with the cross beams. And then it looks like it's in the floor because there is stone in the floor. So I've just outlined the build in spruce logs. And now what you wanna do is to change up the blocks that you're using. So whether that is creating uh, an extended color palette. So for this build, I would probably use andesite, stone, and maybe stone bricks. And that would be my color palette for the walls. However, on the top, I could change the color palette to being oak planks and stripped oak logs. That just adds a little bit of variety into the build itself and it's, it's, it's not a major thing. You can add details on top of that. It just makes blank walls look much more interesting to look at. So what this does is it just creates a little bit of interesting things for your eyes to look at and your brain to process. So on the bottom layer, it's almost like a very small gradient. So the stone bricks are a little darker than stone and the andesite is a little lighter than stone. So it just makes a little bit of a gradient, which just makes it, it makes it look more grounded and it sort of draws your eye up. And then on the top, it is a lot lighter. And then finally on the roof, it is a little bit darker, but that's okay because it is a fairly light roof. So the next thing you need to do is the next biggest thing. And so that is to add in windows, um, in your roofs, in your walls, add overhangs here. And I'm just going to go around and punch in some windows. And depending on the style of build, you may want to punch in more or less windows. For example, with this style, they needed enough light. Like it's very old fashioned, so you needed enough light to be able to see inside. But... Um, they, they didn't have massive windows in medieval times. So keeping a lot of the windows very small, but also adding in some big ones for fun. 
And what I also want to do is to bring out the spruce logs a little bit like this, just to add in that extra raw look that some that like medieval builds have. Like it's it's like their actual logs. And I'm gonna put some spruce buttons on the end. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to actually put in detailing in between these and an extra layer of detail and like trimming for the build. And then another thing you might want to do is look through the stair variations of whatever you've used for your walls and see if you would like to add in some stairs into your walls just to make it look a little bit, that is not the right one. Just to make it look a little bit worn down if it is like an old style. Because it works great with this build because it is in a medieval sort of style. So it makes the bottom just look a little bit run down. And I'm not going to go crazy with this. Just adding in a few blocks here and there. Another option that you have with this style is actually putting stairs under and above the windows. To make the windows look sort of like indented in. But I think that would look a bit better in a fantasy sort of, um, no, not fantasy, sorry. Like a, yeah, I guess fantasy, cottage core. Um, uh, that works especially well when you have a brick bottom. So a brick bottom, like what we've done on the back here with one block windows, that looks really great with brick, with, um, stairs under and above to sort of make that window feel really nested into the bricks. So you need to work out what glass you like, how you want to dress up your windows. Because windows are such an essential part of the build, dressing them up is really important. So you might want to get some spruce trap doors and make some shutters for your windows. Or you could do what I said before with the stairs and indent the windows in. You don't need to do 27 different designs for your windows to make them be detailed or super cool. You can do very similar things for all of your windows and then at the end they'll look really, they'll look nice and put together and like they're part of the same build rather than something that was like haphazardly put together. And if you do remove your torches that's not always feasible in survival. You can see that everywhere in the build is sort of like at a decent light level inside. There are no torches in there, it's purely from the sunlight. That that can be a good indicator of how many windows you need and how many window and where you need them. I'm also gonna add in some windows up the top in line with the center of this window. And there we go, we have another window. Although what I am gonna do is add in some trapdoors like that. So it looks a little bit more um it looks like it has some sort of like a trimming and it's like being held together by something and that just adds a little bit more depth to the window it gives it a little it looks like it's being hugged in there and it's really in place and it sort of adds just a little sense of i don't know it, it being part of the build not something that was added on later so the next thing you want to work on is your trimmings and so what this means is you want to add in any other sort of like details that you might want to add just for like like an extension of the support structures but this would include things like the buttons here which I, I did earlier but the buttons here are like a sort of a trim and what you might want to do if you had an upper story that came out you might want to want to add some stairs you might want to add want to add some stairs so it would look supported and it would transition nicely between the bottom and the top. But yes, yeah, so you can add signs, you can add trap doors, anything that you think will make a good trimming. And I've put in these spruce stairs because I want to add a planter box here. Planter boxes are really cool. They make sort of windows pop and it means you can add in more greenery to your build. And the more greenery, the better. And another thing you can do with trimmings is add in some fences. Another idea that you could do would be to add fence gates across here as a trimming. 
Which actually I might do because that looks really good. That looks better for this sort of build than the fence than the signs. So just adding that, it's a little bit of detail. You could have them open if you wanted to, but I think that tends to work better up here when it looks like the roof is coming down, which I'm gonna do as well because why not? So I finished adding the trimming. I've added this, these fence gates, and I've also added them on top to make it look like the roof has some sort of like, um, it's like connected to the bottom, but somehow I've done that on not this side because it's not a flat roof side, but I've done this on this side. I've added in some fences and lanterns and I've just done the same all the way around. So the next thing you want to do is you want to add in any other details you want. So for example, this might be a chimney. I'm definitely going to be making a chimney and you may need to sacrifice some of the details that you've added in for this chimney because otherwise it'll just look a bit too cramped, but that's okay. And I will have to change some of this to accommodate for it, but that's okay. We are adding without making it too crammed. So if there is no space for anything else, don't do any more. So I am going to take out this window because having a lovely view of a chimney isn't quite what we want. And it just looks a bit too crowded if I, if I keep it in here. So this is actually just going to be a flat wall. So I added the campfire. It looks pretty cool. Um, how? So I, I basically took out all the details that I needed to from this side. It's okay. You don't need to keep everything that you've done. Um... And just made it climb up this wall and come out around and like hug the building and then come right around the roof and stick out just a little bit to make it look like a nice campfire. And the last thing you want to do is to add in greenery. Greenery is the most important part of the build. It breaks up the harsh colors of like buildings like greys and wood colours. The wood colours are pretty nice, not gonna lie, but it still helps to break it up and reconnect it with the environment that it's in. So in this step you may also want to terraform your build or around your build so that it fits in more with the surroundings. Add in some custom trees if you wanted or do anything like that. But really make sure your build is getting tied into the surroundings so what this means for what I'm going to do to this build is I'm going to take out some of the trimming and put in a lot of planter boxes. And just a reminder that not everything needs to be contained by containers that you put up. Like they're visual containers like this planter box. It's not actually containing things but it's like visually containing it. Not everything needs to be contained. It's okay if something just falls out it adds movement and life to the build it's it make things fall out make things a little bit unruly it it works when you add in flowers to your planter boxes don't put three flowers in for three blocks of planter boxes put like one or two and only keep to one or two flowers that hopefully matches what you have in your leaves so the last thing to do is go and refine your build. Now, I really like this, but there's a lot going on. So try and keep the things that add movement and life and remove the stuff that just doesn't add anything to the build. So I'm going to remove this trimming because I liked it at the start when we had less on the build, but it's gotten to a point where it adds too much to the build. I'm going to keep this plant box because it adds a bit of life with the open trap doors and leaves falling out of it. It adds some motion to Minecraft, which we don't really see unless we sort of make it artificially. And this is pretty nice. And I'm just going to go around and sort of take away anything that adds too much. So at this point, there is enough for your eyes to see that it, that it seems interesting, but not too much that you are overwhelmed. So this is, this is a good place to leave your build. So in summary, how to detail your build. Add in support structures and block variations. Then add in the windows and the doorways. Really important to make sure you have enough light in your build 
and a way to enter and exit. Then add in your trimmings, add in your intricate details like in the building, color and shape, and just really small, subtle details that make the build a little bit better. Then add in any other things that you want, for example, a chimney, and then add in your greenery and really tie it to nature. You may also want to add in pathways with path blocks out the front, but just really connect your build to nature in the last step so that it doesn't look out of place in its surroundings and just looks a little bit better. It breaks, it the greenery helps to break up the different colors and things going on. You can't go wrong with greenery. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you very soon for another video.